Hi everyone, it's Dr. Janet. I want to share my screen with you. Go over. This is our week one rubric from the short paper you just submitted and I just graded. I want to go over the rubric in case you may not have opened this, realized it's in the classroom. I know sometimes it can be information overload. Um, I do try to share additional information because I try to explain a little bit more about what's going on in our classrooms. So for this particular assignment, on the short paper, your information was very short on the instructions. You were to do a short paper, use double spacing, 12 point times new Roman font, one inch margins. This is all following APA format. Page length requirements is one to two pages. Now I will say that for a one page report uh, to be completely thorough, it would have had to been very direct and to the point um, with, you know, including your sources of information. The one to two pages never will include your title page and your references page. So technically you should have had like three to four pages for this assignment because you'll have your title page, your written information, and then your references page at the very end. The references page should always be a separate page with all of your sources listed on it. On your references page, uh, in case you're not aware, uh, when you write out your sources, we do have lots of sources in our class information. You can go to Google Scholar. You can connect the Shapiro Library to your library settings as well. And then the easiest way to format the references page, it's still going to be Times New Roman, uh, double space throughout. The title of the page is References. It should be centered at the very top of the page. On your sources, the easiest thing to do is to either type up or insert all of your sources and make sure they're all left justified. Once those sources are to the left, um, or I guess I could go that way because you're watching the video, but uh, having your sources all left justified, what you'll do then is you're going to highlight all of your sources. On your keyboard, you're going to press the control key, which is the bottom left, which says CTRL, and then you'll press that with the letter T, as in Tom, the T key. Control T and then let go and then all of your sources will do the uh, the hanging indents where you'll have the first line is to the left and all lines underneath it for that same source will be indented. It's opposite of what your content looks like in the above section. In your written content, your paragraphs are to be indented five spaces at the very first line and then every you know follows follows suit for each paragraph. Paragraphs are three to five sentences each, or should be. Um, when you look at your rubric here, this is the same rubric that all of your professors and your instructors will open to grade. And so when we go to grade, we have to look at your paper and we look at this table. And we have to select the box that that's best matches what you've given. So if you have not cited uh, several sources of information, uh, preferably three or more, then there's a good chance that you did not get 100% because when you look at the information on the rubric, the course designers use words like multiple examples, multiple concepts that are in the class. Um, let's see here, draws insightful conclusions that are thoroughly defined with evidence and example. Again, that means that you're citing your sources. Justified evidence, that's the same thing as saying you have to include your sources of information. We have lots of course sources, um, resources that you can use. Here on the research segment, uh, it asks them, um, you know, to make sure that you've incorporated many scholarly resources. So when you see words like multiple, many, and several, that means that you should be including no less than three sources of information. Why do I say three? Well, because one means one, um, or a source means one double or a couple means two. When you see multiple, many, several, just know that that means you need to have at least three sources of information. In addition to our course book, we do have resources each week, so there's more than enough for you to include in your research papers because regardless of how short the papers are, you do need to still have these sources and you need to follow with the rubric. I can't give points for something that isn't there. And so to explain this, it's not that, you know, I'm not making up APA format. It's just it's what, how I have to grade based on what the rubric is telling me I need to, you know, grade you on. 
Um, example, when we get down here to the writing mechanics and citations, this is where a lot of students get hit heavily. Sometimes the score is not too big of a score, but I still share information because I want to make sure that everybody is writing at a collegiate level. I got all the way through my master's program before I entered my doctoral program and found out that I wasn't writing APA format correctly. Hardly any of my instructors ever corrected it. You know, they corrected things that were easy to see, but they didn't correct my formatting. So it really was a detriment to me as I went on in my degree and I'm trying to pay that forward because I don't want anybody else to have to go through that frustration that I went through. So when you're looking at the writing mechanics, um, whenever you see that I mention on your feedback that you need, you know, you didn't include enough sources or that your APA formatting wasn't correct or you didn't do your citations, that's because that's how I have to grade. I, you know, I'm not doing it on my own. There is a heavy emphasis on collegiate writing and APA format is uh, what most universities use. Uh, and, and so when you're looking at this, and when I look at this, it says here clearly, no errors related to organization, grammar, and style, and citations. And sometimes the wording will change here, but it's pretty much relevant throughout the entire term and through all rubrics that your writing mechanics are going to always relate to these things. Your organization is going to be something as looking at the critical elements in this first column, making sure that you have all of this information included. Well, what if the information is kind of vague? Well, then if it's saying that you're including the main elements and requirements and you're citing the multiple examples to illustrate each element, well, refer back to your module. What did we learn in that week? We learned branding in week one. So this is what you're focusing on. And you're going to look at your sources of information in your classroom. You'll include those. You want to paraphrase. You don't want to copy word for word. You want to paraphrase so that you have the information and that you're citing your sources. Now for citing your sources, if I were the author, for example, and you did an in-text citation, an in-text citation example would be something like, um, according to Deskins 2019, in parentheses, the, you know, the following or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever the thought is, you paraphrase it into your own words, but you still give me as the original author credit because you found your information by reading what I wrote. If you're going to do a parenthetical citation, which means that you're going to put the author's name and the date or the year in parentheses. You would paraphrase your thought from that source that you read, um, and then you would include parentheses at the end, and it would have, again, if you use my name, you'd have Deskins, 2019 in parentheses and a period at the very end. Now the period on your, when you have your parenthetical citation, it always goes at the very end after the final parenthesis. It doesn't go before it uh, because that citation is part of that entire sentence. So don't put a period before and after or before, move that period to the very end. It's just simple formatting things like that that's gonna help you improve on your overall writing. Uh, our library has lots of examples to help you because different formats have different uh, styles that we have to write because a lot of times it'll depend. Does your source have an author? Is there no author? Um, if there's no author, then instead of using the author's last name, you use the title of that website page as in, in the place of the author. Um, yes, there is formatting issues on creating um, your titles. For example, an APA your sources of in your titles, um, only the first letter of the first word is to be capitalized and all following words are lowercase. It looks really weird, but what do you, I mean, it's APA. It's, um, it's like a bunch of psychologists that got together and created this writing style that universities use. So we have to follow it and I have to grade according to that. And so that is all part of your concept. If I don't point out your concepts, if I don't point out and say, hey, you're missing something here, and, and if I focus on your writing um, or that you didn't include enough sources or if I point out your APA, just know that that's all part of your writing mechanics and I am required to point that out to you. So it's not something I'm making up. It's just something that I have to do to make sure that I'm getting you on the same page with the rubric. And so I'm hoping that by sharing this information, you will read that 
um, or listen to this video so that you know that, okay, moving forward, I need to do this so that I can meet all this information because I want Professor Deskins to look at the exemplary column and I want her to be able to say, yes, this is required. This is, I mean, it's in there. This is in there. This is in there. This is in there. This is in there. And, you know, yes, you followed, you know, perfect writing styles. Yes. Will you possibly have a, you know, a, a bloop? Yeah, maybe, but, and that's fine. And if it's something so minor, I'll still point it out, but I'm not going to mark off for it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you need to make sure you're following this rubric and on all the rubrics for all the assignments are in the same exact format. Instructions sometimes are going to be a lot longer. Uh, but you just basically the easiest thing to do when you see a lot of instructions or even with something like this You can print it out and I used to write my paper and then as I met that particular segment of the rubric I've got the elements in there. I would check it off and then I go to the next box and say okay well for inquiry and analysis did I provide an in-depth analysis that demonstrated my complete understanding of multiple concepts again an in-depth analysis, that's another little term in there that colleges like to use, um, which simply means, are you doing your research? Are you including your sources of information? Yes, there is common information that we do know offhand, but for the most part, when you're writing about certain concepts, that is not common knowledge, and we are writing at a collegiate level, so just go ahead and include at least three sources of information so that you have an in-depth paper that you're using multiple um, you know, examples, uh, evidence, presenting evidence that you're justifying and defending your writing by backing up your sources. Um, even as a marketer, you know, and, and in advertising, we always have to have our sources of information because we're going to be charged with uh, dealing with you know budgets and and probably a lot of times a lot of money from these companies and our company leaders want to know well where are you using this money and why should I give you that much money and this is where you say well here look I did all this research I got this information from Google Analytics I got this from the zip code data this is what our demographic shows and here's all of the data and you just give as much information as possible to your company leaders and it's the same thing you're doing in here in the classroom you're giving this information to prove you understand all of the concepts and that you meet all of these requirements and as long as you're meeting that it's not going to be a fine tooth comb kind of thing it's just going to be like okay yes that's met that's met that's met and there are some of you that um, would be watching that would see that even though you did earn 100% that maybe you forgot to include your year with your in-text citation and your content, or maybe you had um, some kind of formatting issue on your references page. I'm gonna point things out like that just to help you to grow and progress in your writing skills, but I'm not gonna necessarily always mark you off for that. Now, if we're in week you know, six or seven or so, and you're still making the same mistakes and um, you know, and not not reading my feedback and not implementing it, well, yeah, I'll start marking off because then it's going to be obvious that you're not really interested in bettering your writing skills. And that's what my role is here. My role is here is to share this information, make sure you understand how the rubric works, um, how the grading works, and to ensure that you're trying to include or that you are including the most amount of information from our course material from that week. And every week is going to be the same, even as we work through our teams and we develop um, our course project. As you're developing your course project, your final project for the end of the term for this advertising campaign, while you're sharing that information among your team members, you should also, you know, you, you each need to be saving that information for yourself because that's what you're going to be submitting at the end of the term. When we get to the end of the term, I cannot tell you how many times we have, have, have teams that will submit their paper because at the end, each of you do submit your own version of your team's project. Yes, your information is going to be pretty much the same, but 
if you have somebody who is taking the lead, for example, and if they don't know how to format their sources, or if they don't take the annotated bibliography that you're working on in weeks one and two and convert that into your content and then move the sources down to the references page, things like that, uh, paying attention to the form and style of your paper, um, following the rubric, making sure there's no spelling errors or grammar or, you know, mistakes, things like that. Um, this is where your personal touch comes in when we get to that final paper. And this is where some students and, you know, not every, don't assume everybody in your team is going to all get the same grade. You may be working on all this information, but, you know, you may not, um, you may look at your SWOT analysis later on, say in week six and realize, I don't really, you know, I see this, this product going somewhere else and, and, you know, maybe you go back to your team and you say, hey, I, you know, we need to look at this portion of the SWOT analysis and we need to change this. Um, you know, if it works with your product and you feel it needs to be changed, you can change it in your final project just to update it so that it better meets where your brand and your product is moving towards. Um, you don't have to incorporate mistakes that you see just because you worked on it as a team. Another way to look at this final project is that a lot of times in companies, they will open up an opportunity so that several employees have the opportunity to work on a campaign. And while you may work on the campaign at the same time and get all the same information to present, everybody has their own different style and, every, and there may be some people that are more creative than others. So this is where you come in and you're like, all right, well, I'm going to add you know, an additional chart or a graph, or I'm going to create a logo, or I'm going to do some kind of artwork or include some images, you might want to dress it up a little bit. And that's perfectly fine. When you do things like that, and you take the basic information, and then you present it in a way that is personalized to you. It's the same thing in the business world. This is where it separates you from the rest of the group. Yes, you were a team. But at the same time, if you're a team that's all competing for a project and you have to submit it separately to your bosses, to the, the company leaders, this is the same type of the thing. Um, it's not where, you know, you're working on a project and you're just submitting it as one at the very end. Everybody submits their own at the very end. And again, like I said, the information will be very similar, but you can, you can personalize it and tweak it. And this is where following these rubrics will help guide you and this is why it's so important to make sure that you know that your citations are correct that your sources are correct and so as you're gathering all this information throughout each week take it put it into your computer start compiling it making sure that it is in the right format um, if you need to tweak some certain senses or paragraphs or anything like that because you know that the writing of the person or whoever drafted it wasn't really correct, go ahead and fix it. Um, you don't have to submit, you know, mistakes or errors just because you worked on it as a team. So I hope that kind of makes sense and doesn't throw you guys off. Um, but, you know, just something I think it's really important for me to mention since I am talking about the rubric. Um, but I hope you guys, I hope it helps. Um, you guys reach out to the library if you need any help with your formatting and your collegiate writing. Um, there are librarians that are also available to help you. I hope some of the tips that I've shared um, were helpful as well. I will see you in the classroom. You can always ask questions in the classroom. Please only email me if you have personal concerns because if you have a question for the course, it's better to post that in the classroom in case somebody else has the same question and it just helps the whole group. I will try to do these videos as often as possible to kind of help reiterate and maybe visually explain a little bit better how all of this stuff works. Um, but again, I hope it was helpful. Sorry for going long, uh, but I appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.